All right, now that the uh, <clears throat> the dyes dried on the edge, it's time to go ahead and start burnishing. First thing I'm going to do is wet the edges. Now I like to make sure the dye is good and dry. I actually gave it a couple of days. I take my burnisher. I guess I could hook something up in my drill press and use that, but I, I just do the burnishing by hand. And just go along here. Until I get that edge looking the way I want it to. Actually, I need some more water. There we go. And that's a bit much, actually, but that should work just fine. Hey, you can see. It's starting to get there. Just a little while longer of doing this. Well, maybe more than just a little while. <laughs> but yeah, you can see it's, it's starting to get there. I'm going to keep on doing this and we'll come back to it and get ready for the next step in burnishing. Okay, that's just a, uh, oops, <laughs> that's just a water burnish there. And I'm going to let that dry a little bit. And then we're going to pull out our gum drag. Where am I? Pull out our gum drag. There we go and um, burnish with that. Put that on with the dauber. Do the same thing, burnish it. Now that's all it is, you just, I, I just take this, this uh, burnisher that I got from Tandy. In fact, I've got two of them. This one, I guess you can guess what color I use it almost exclusively with. Then I got another one for like, well, brown colors. In fact, you can see a little bit of blue in there where I use it to burnish that uh, a blue jean holster. But, you know, I got two of them because this one can transfer some of that black dye over to a lighter brown and I don't like that. Sometimes a hunk of deer antler works. Just, you know, if you need to get into the little areas that you can't normally get into with the regular burnisher, I just use this. In fact, you know, like inside there, it works pretty good. Um, I guess you could also just use a tool handle, hardwood tool handle, use that to burnish with. But yeah, mostly I use this. I guess I can get one of those burnishers, like I said, that you can chuck into a drill press and do it that way, but I prefer doing it by hand. I don't know. I get a very nice burnish with it. And it's, well, there's a certain satisfaction in doing stuff by hand. Now, you, well, yeah, I use a machine to sand it. But other than that, I just do stuff by hand. Actually, I think that's about ready now. For the gum track. Get around the edges a little bit more. See, when you have a wide edge like that, it is important that you um, take a lot of time and make it look nice. Now, once this is done and dried, I'm going to go through and I'm going to uh, burnish all the rest of these edges that I can get to. 
like you know around there and such and get those done again and eventually we're gonna get some stitches in this thing well let me get that gum track let me get let me get set up for the gum track and I'll be right back now it's called gum track account I call it gum track for short just because you know it's easier to say that way and I always shake it up gonna put in my clamp here just you know to prevent it from uh, prevent me from knocking it over you know clumsy and oak like and knocking it over and making a mess where's my burnisher there it is now I'm going to use this dauber this dauber started life like this see used to be a big fluffy dauber now it's a little hard dauber and I prefer using something like this over something like this for putting the gum track on because I have more control over it oh yeah it starts out big and fluffy but after a while and we just put our gum track can't on the edge you don't need great gobs of it it's not like an edge coat and it's I don't consider it a finished coat either some people they'll, they'll gum track their edges and burnish them and leave them at that but gum track itself really doesn't last all that long so I go ahead and I top coat after I'm done burnishing with the gum track Make sure I get all, all the way down and on the edges of it there. Or I should say on, well, on the beveled corners. So up here. And then normally I'll give that a moment or two to go ahead and dry a little bit. That's just the way I do it. And y'all don't have to sit there and watch gum drag dry so I'm gonna switch this off and come back to you okay I've given it a minute or two to dry a little and soak in and then just go ahead and start burnishing again and just keep going until you get that nice shine on it that everybody likes well I do anyway another reason I don't use edge coat or edge paint I don't know I guess some people can use a part of their uh, edge burnishing but actually I, I like having the layers of the uh, of the leather visible I don't know if you can really see those layers in there but it'll be nice it'll be shiny it'll be burnished a nice finished edge but you'll still see the layers of leather so I'm gonna go ahead and keep burnishing this probably put a second coat of gum track on it and burnish it some more that's coming out rather nice I might not and then we'll get back to you